you know, people, you know, they're behind their keyboards. I get it. They can write whatever they want. I get it. Uh, but you know what? We're actually going to make people a little bit accountable because here's the thing. M- me and you get held accountable for everything we say, Yuli. Oh, yeah. I mean, we're on, we're, we talk disc golf for, well, I mean, I talk disc golf probably close to like 20 hours a month. You're probably close to like the 14, 15 hours a month. Ooh, more than no, that. no, you're more because of Jomez. Yeah, I'm, I'm up there high, high. I think you're more than me. So, so we, you, we, we know it better than anyone. If you say something in one of those hours of many, many, and it's just off a little bit, we get held accountable. So oh, yeah. let's hold the chat accountable. Now we're going back to last week's episode and we're going to go through some of the uh, top comments Okay, and, and we're just going to react to some of them. So, um, first one here, let's see here. Are we blasting the name too? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Yay. I mean, si- Silas might even bring it up here. Yeah, though, here we go. We got Silas bringing it up here. Here, here we go. Um, so this one, this one. Okay, first off, Yuli, a lot of back and forth. Some people agreeing with you. Some people agreeing with me. Some people kind of saying that we're both saying the same thing, just mm-hmm. not really listening to each other. Which uh, is also true. Which is it's probably also true. Yeah, it's yep. all true. Uh, Neil Edridge, 5697, says, I hate to say it, but I got to agree with Bro Dog on this one. I stopped watching FPO because of the putting on lead card. See what putting should have zero to do with male and female phys- physicality arguments. Hopefully they get there one day, but I think they haven't gotten better at putting because they don't have to. Um. I actually kind of agree with that one. I kind of agree with that one. Um, Mullet Farm says Brody smashing on PDGA vacations is the best rant he's done in months. Oh, I'll take that. I felt like I was in my bag on that one. I didn't really know where that one was headed, but I felt like I was absolutely in my bag when that was going off. I I was, I just let loose uh, and just, you know, no one, no one's really doing it. That, that's the sad thing, Yuli. I don't. Well, what's your take on that? On are, are, are we ever going to see other other professionals? Because here's the thing. Let's be honest. The majority of people right now that are in disc golf media have their foot somehow in the PDGA or the disc golf pro tour. Very true. Right. Yeah. And so, and so they're going to be, they're going to tiptoe. They're going to be very careful about what they say about the disc golf pro tour and what they say about the PDJ. Um, are, are we ever going to see players? Cause if you guys could see what players say behind closed doors, I think it would open up a lot of people's eyes. Um, are we ever going to see more people come out and say actually what they feel? I mean, <clears throat> In the media side, there it has to come to a point where there's other big, uh, let's say, podcasts or shows or side um, reporters or or whatever that are going to going to report and say whatever they want. And so, I don't think disc golf has a lot of that. No, like you, you don't have a lot of people hold like you just were holding the uh, chat accountable. But it's tough when. Like for, for you and I, we're on tour. But I also work for the pro tour technically with Joe Mids because now they own it. You see what I'm saying? So yeah. if I go completely hard, I, I do run the risk of really making somebody mad, and that's an for employer sure. of mine. So yeah. I have to tiptoe around it. I also try to be as honest as I possibly can with a lot of that stuff, and I think they respect me for that because the things that I will say they do need to be accountable for. I think in other sports, the reporters and the sideshows and the sports centers and the ESPNs, they don't have anything to do with the NFL. They don't have anything to do with, for the most part, there's some ex players or ex, uh, let's say, um, um, commentators that get on there and get a spot on the, on the show or, or whatever, but they just absolutely wreck everybody. Mm. They hold everybody accountable. It's a topic every single week. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like CD lamb in the NFL. And the contracts, like he's getting wrecked. He's getting oh completely yeah. shut down with all this stuff. And then they got other people being like, no, this is what he's supposed to do. He's trying to get his bag. And it's just like, we don't have that, you know? 
because everybody's kind of so close, like you're saying. So as soon as you have multiple different reporters, multiple different shows that are respected, that have people on there that actually kind of know what they're talking about and make yeah. sense half the, half the time, hopefully, yeah. at least half the time. And then you're going to get maybe a, a, the needle will move a little bit. You know what I mean? But right now, it's just a tough place. Uh, all right, we got Ricky... Ricky Ticky Sicky. <laughs> First thing Evelina said in an interview after the tournament, putting was bad. She knows. That's why she's so good at it. Literally everything else. She knows she has to be. Worthy winner, one by two, despite of mediocre putting. All right. Uh, that should tell you something. Yeah, exactly. Ricky, that tells me that the competition is not where it needs to be. That that's what our that's what my point was. The fact that you can go out there, not mediocre, bad, bad putting, and win a world championship, that tells you where the competition is. Can't you just can't you just be so good at something that you just it doesn't matter how good the other person is, it doesn't even matter. Like here's not, what I'm saying. Not not, not in a I'm sport go, that they both here. matter. Not in a because people are bringing and we're gonna get to it in a second. People are bringing up Shaq, and I, I'll we'll get to that in a second. That was like a very small part of the game. Continue what? though. What? What was a very small part of the game? Shooting free throws. Was a very people were bringing up the fact that like Shaq, oh, I got you. I Shaq got you. was bad at shooting free and he throws. He was dominant. Yeah, and he was dominant everywhere it's else. It's a decent I, comparison because he did. It's get, not though. Well, let me. I don't know. No, it it's was. not. It's not. It's not a good it, comparison. They made hack a Shaq. It was a big deal. What are you talking about? Yeah, and it was really hard and it to didn't win. Matter. And it it was, didn't matter. It was, he was really, so good. Uh, no, it works. It works sometimes, but I'm still saying like there <laughs> was, it there was, and then it, it didn't really, I, work. I know, but you're, you're fouling people out. You're having to put people in the game just to foul him. You have to, you had to change. You had to change how you played against him. It's, it's a little bit different. How is many all more I'm championships to say. does he win if he makes all his free throws? Just ask yourself that question or let's say 80%. It doesn't move the needle. Brody does it. Oh no! Yeah, if he if he was a better free throw shooter, he would have been a better he would he would have been a better basketball player. I agree with that. But what I'm trying to say is, free throws is such a small part of the game, where like literally they would they would try to foul him and he would still make the basket. But that's what I'm saying. It made it a big part of the game, and it still didn't matter. They made it an essential part of uh, the game. Only only towards the, the very end, they weren't they weren't hack shacking him as soon as the tip went off. For the entire game, you'd foul everyone out. They did. They did you, do that one game. Do you remember that where they just grabbed him? They yeah, it was off. a joke. Was it was funny. a joke. Yeah, yeah that was funny. but what I'm saying is like it was. It's impossible to do hack a shack sure. for the entirety of the game because you would literally foul your entire team out imagine, and lose. Okay, so imagine this. How it's much a smaller criticism, part of the game? How much part? criticism would somebody get if they were eighty percent fairways hit? Okay. Mm-hmm. They were a hypothetical here. They yeah, were of course. 70% in the parked category. Mm-hmm. And they were 22% outside of parked for the whole putting. And they would still, they would still win. They would still win every tournament. Yeah. I mean, you're kind of talking about Scotty Scheffler. I mean, I, I think that's what we got to compare. We can't really compare it to basketball that's, because in those a, sports, it's like, yeah. so let's, it's, let's talk about it. he's Scotty Scheffler is not a great putter. He's, he sometimes gets hot and puts well. And when he does that, he wins by a lot. And then when he doesn't putt well, he either loses or he barely wins. But it's 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 something that people talk about. Yeah. And when I'm talking about putting and it, well, it and hold on. Look, when I'm talking does about, it looks, does it look silly? For him? golf, when he misses four footers, does it look silly, Brody? It doesn't look good. No. <laughs> it doesn't look good. It's golf. Everybody gives it a pass because we know that making a four footer is hard. Correct. And that's what my point is saying. Making a 10 footer in disc golf is not equivalent to making a three footer in golf. I am never missing a 10 footer in disc golf. Yuli. 
That is like saying waking up and walking Rocky to the Rocky bathroom. Three putted from that, or four that, putted from that close. Well, yeah, just kidding. <laughs> but that, and this is this was my whole argument. Everyone was saying like, um, no, women do have a disadvantage. Do women have a disadvantage in taking a step? If the goal was to take a step, who I has mean, a better now, advantage, if you want to really women get down, or men? Down to the nitty gritty, there is a disadvantage. One of the things is this right here, hand size. But, it but again, it think about what I'm saying. And in do they have other an advantage? Do they have an th advantage? This changes or? basketball. It changes. They give them smaller ball. Smaller ball, sure. So there is a there is a slight disadvantage. There has to be. But but By I'm literally talking size, about so taking no, no, MPO to FPO. The hand size. I agree is, with you. Is pretty I'm, I'm big, not, right? I'm not disagreeing with that so, point. No, no, no. Because you made a point. It has to be the same. They can still do the as good. Cause, cause what I'm asking you to do is I'm literally saying, leave the ground. The goal is to leave the ground. It's not to jump over a 30 inch box. The goal is to levitate off the ground, whether it's a quarter of an inch or 36 inches, it doesn't matter. That is the goal. Who has a better advantage in leaving the ground men or women? Even across the board. That's my point. That is equivalent to trying to putt from 10 feet. 10 feet. All, okay, let's talk 20 you, feet. I think there does become a point where women have a less advantage. I agree with you. We don't see women stand still putting like Gannon and AB and all these freaks oh, that, that are doing very it. Few. Very, very few. I don't see any of them. No, I, I don't mean, see I mean, Owen can putt stand still pretty dang far. Not from 90 feet. No, she's jumping and throwing from 90 yeah. feet. Yeah, like Gannon, Gannon is just doing his little yeah, thing he's also from 90. Seven foot tall. And that's what I'm saying. There are advantages once you get out. I'm literally saying a step. Take a step. Who has a more advantage? No one. It, we're asking to take a step. 10 feet. Let's continue on here. Um, let's but the, see. Oh, I'm going back. But this yeah, does, yeah, go back. Go this, back. This, this does bring to my point that you were arguing last week of the ceiling and the ceiling in FBO is lower and that's fine because not from you're, 10 admitting feet. you're not from, no, not not from 10, 10 feet. feet. Come on in the circle. You said, in I don't even think in the circle. I don't think it is in the circle. I don't, I don't think 30 feet is it. Uh, I don't think 30 feet men should have a massive advantage over, or over women. I don't. I don't think it. I I I I, just, I can't fathom that in my head. I can't. You the fact that, that you don't the, think that the, a the, smaller a, hand size gives you less of, of an advantage from thirty feet. That's wrong. Well, let's think about that for a second. All right, uh, Edwin, can you tell me the top ten MPO putters in MPO? I don't think I need to say MPO twice. Top 10 MPO putters <laughs> in, in circle one is what I meant. In MPO. In MPO. <laughs> I, I mean, th th this isn't even an argument. There's a, there's a distinct advantage to having a bigger hand on any distance. No. On any distance. No. No. It's leverage, Brody. It might be small, but it's leverage, and that's true. It goes back. It goes uh, not on any distance, though. Just like you, having a too big of a hand would be a disadvantage. All right, here we go. Oh, okay, here we go. Let's let's talk hand size here, because Yuli, you might you might be this might be interesting. Top ten here: Yuli, Marweed, Bell, Burr, Eagle, Ricky, Proctor, Ellis, A. B. I'm gonna go out on the land and say those are all guys that have big hands. Except I would say for all, except for you and Matt Bell. I bet you Matt Bell has big hands. He's he's not even six feet tall. He's like but he's five. Like lanky. Have you ever seen his arms? They're I've, freaking lanky. He is, he is lanky. He we is lanky. Ask him. Yeah, we gotta ask him what size gloves he wears. Um, can we can we agree though <laughs> that uh, at a certain point when you're doing a skill that is so easy, it doesn't matter. But then obviously, as that skill gets more and more challenging, then those advantages actually come in to play. I like think no one, no one has an advantage for breathing. 
breathe. <laughs> Everyone can do it. But as soon as you're like, okay, now hold your breath for five seconds. Everyone can do that. Hold your breath for 10. Everyone can do that. There's no advantage because everyone can do it. That, I would say once you're inside 20 feet, there's no, there's no advantage. Okay. So you I like would, the 20 feet. Yeah. I, I, like, I don't know. I don't know where that distance is yet. I think it, exists. it clearly right exists. There, I think it clearly exists. I agree. It clearly exists. I just don't know where it is. Um, yeah, but yeah. Neither. All right. All right. <laughs> uh, what, was, what were we on? And then I took us back. No, you're good. We're moving forward. Uh, let's see here. To 10 feet. Uh, Miles White says Brody at 149.45 when he's describing how to putt from 15 feet like it's a joke, but the FVP, FPO field should legit go out and practice this. Yes, I agree. Yes. Um, now, can we, uh, here's another thing that our sport is lacking. Okay. And that is coaches. And that is like someone telling these people to do stuff. Yeah. Holding them accountable, teaching them better form a coach. Like if, if, if we go to, we'll go back to golf. There, there's a thousand different things that people will try. And you go to, a, if you're a great player, you can go somewhere and that person will be like, yeah, I can help you. You go to Bob Rotella. I'll help you with the mine. You go to a putting coach. You know, these, all these guys have all of those things. We don't mm. have that at all. Yeah. It's just expensive. You have players who guessed, right? Who guessed. That's all I did. I'm guessing. Mm. Uh, do I really know for fact? No, it's impossible. I yeah. don't have a, a degree in biomechanics. I don't know. I have experience. I've tested a lot of things out. I've worked with a lot of students. And so my guess from what I can tell was correct. Right. Mm. And if let's say how many coaches are out there that we know of in disc golf to where you're, you know, we see some Instagram clips here and there of guys doing it. You know, we got Stokely myself and um, Brian Earhart, people who I really respect in the coaching business. Right. Mm Mm-hmm. And then who are these, who are these girls going to go to? Who are these men going to go to? There's nobody. They have to do it themselves. And so they're going to practice something that is clearly not working Mm. and they don't know the cues or the A's to to fix it. Sometimes something and, and, and holding yourself accountable, we can go, we can say, oh yeah, just go to the field and start putting and blah, 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 blah. Some people just aren't built like that. There are some athletes out there who are lazy but they find a coach who somehow motivates them mm. in the right direction to not be lazy. They hold them accountable. They hit whatever they're in their brain. They connect the dots and they go, no, we need to do this because of this. And they explain it in a way that's helpful. Mm. We don't have that. We don't have that at all. Much less she's doing the hardest thing I believe in disc golf, which is throwing the disc way better than everybody. Right. Yes. yes. Without a coach. Now imagine if she got a coach with that who actually knew what they were talking about. It can mess you up for sure. There is a yeah, risk yes, of that, but I would say majority point, of the time though, it's going to be better. At this point, yeah, this would be something. Who Who's she going to go to? You I know, know what I mean? You, you gotta, it's tough. You, you got to change something because if you're – if you're not changing it, then it's simply just, uh, I, I don't know. It, it, and you got to be held gotta accountable change. because here's the thing. If you're not held accountable and you're not doing the same things, you've done this before. I've done this before. I go out and I putt and I forget the thing that I learned two weeks ago that had me dialed. Mm. It just goes poof. And then I forget. And then you're putting for like an hour and all of a sudden you're like, oh yeah, that's what I was doing. I was doing that two weeks ago. Why did I forget that? And then you're on with your life. If you had somebody who knew your game, knew putting, and he goes, hey, you're not doing this. They give you the cue. Oh, guess what? I didn't have to be out there for an hour. I could have been working on something else. We're losing time. We're losing this stuff. And I think that's one thing that really holds our sport back is we have talented athletes that might not be as motivated as other people. But there's people out there that are trained professionals to motivate. Mm. And we don't got that. We don't. Yeah, I mean, looking at looking back at Ultimate Frisbee, we were doing 
in college, we were doing five practices a week, two track, two track workouts, and then five gym workouts a week. Were you holding each and, other and, accountable? Yeah. And I mean that we weren't getting paid to do it either. So I don't know. There's a lot of people out there that, yeah, it, it, it's it'll, a, it'll fizzle itself out. It already has. It, a lot of those people have gotten fizzled out on the tour. Yes. But imagine the levels of the people who got fizzled out. What if they had that? Yeah. They, they might still be on tour. They might. Yeah, they might. TML says, Brody always says, that's all I'm saying, and then proceeds to say 10 more things. That is an accurate statement. <laughs> I am guilty as charged. Um, or moving on, and then I go back. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Flex says, Brody showing the PDJ how to use their app for pace of play is epic. Wait, where are these ones that I need to... Maybe they weren't top comments. Maybe that's why I'm not seeing them. Size, let me know if you see any good ones. That disagreed with us. I could have swore I read some, and I was like, yeah, I got I don't want all this positive. Yeah, what is this positive, positive nonsense? We don't want this That's crap. Not real. <laughs> I'm um, just kidding. We do appreciate the positive comments. Oh, we awesome. love them. We they're, love they're, them. They're great. Let's see here. We should do one where we pull up ones like off the actual YouTube, right? That's what I'm the, on. No, no, no. From past, very like far past, oh. just brutal ones. Yeah, those like brutal ones from months ago, from a year ago, where they're just completely dogging on us. I want to read those, and then I want to comment on those. Those are fun. Give me a shot. All you got to do, Silas, is literally just go back one month, click on it, first comment, read it to us, and it's probably somebody being like, "You know what? Yuli's full of it." Oh, this is kind of interesting. All right, hit us. All right, Philip T, hot take, pace of play, call me a conspiracy theorist, but when I went to MCO in Nashville, I personally watched the Disc Golf Pro Tour slash PDGA officials go around and gather people to be part of the chase card and lead card, though most wanted to watch lead card. This was an effort to have coverage look better and showing people surrounding the players, so much so that on hole 18 on the final day they were positioning people where to stand and inviting others to vip areas that were not vip just so that when the camera panned i don't hate that actually that's a, I'm, a, I'm actually okay with that yeah they should do that i'm actually okay with that like tell you know if you have a group of 50 people and they're not standing where the camera is yeah I'm, I'm, I'm okay with that keep them away from the vip though that's, that's kind of weird. That, yeah, that's for VIP people. That is weird. I, I was seeing yeah. people getting kind of upset about that too, about uh, you know paying money for VIP access and whatnot at uh, Worlds, and yeah. then seeing people that didn't have VIP get in there. I, I'm not a fan of that. I'm to check tickets. Yeah. Um, well, let's see I think here. it's they just don't have enough people to like be checking check that. Yeah, check it. Yeah. That, I mean, that is a problem. Yeah. Let's see here. Are you seeing anything? Are you seeing? Maybe I was on somewhere else. Yeah, I'm not seeing too much that's against y'all, to be honest. Man, weird. Oh, okay. Fame. Let me let me bring that up. He says Brody looked very rough last week. I think I need. We changed, so we change. I, I look exactly the same as last week. Light, <laughs> Silas Silas will let you know. Lighting has a huge, huge impact on stuff. So I, nothing has changed between last week and this week, which the, nothing physically has changed for me, but we moved this camera back and the lights were positioned differently. And so I think like looking at it, it did look very weird. Size, we need to get you, you down have a here. Black eye last week, <laughs> size, we need, <laughs> size, we need to get you down here ASAP. You and Connor need to get down here and, and build this thing out because even now, like, it's not great lighting because it's up high, and so, like, if I'm here, it, like, it, it shadows my eyes, you know, it's not, it's not the greatest setup I have. Um, okay, I found one. Oh, yeah. here we go. It says Yuli is way off talking about how missing 15 footers is exciting. 
It's a bad look for our sport if I tuned into the Cornhole World Championships and saw the player who won missing the board entirely every other throw. It's very hard to take Cornhole seriously, regardless of who wins or how close it is. Sorry, bud, but you're wrong. <laughs> you're you're 100 percent wrong. Now it might not it might not look cool. It doesn't look cool. But you can't tell me you're not at the edge of your seat watching the World Championships final round because there was like five lead changes. That's exciting. I don't care what anybody says. That's what sports are. If they're like, for example, if they're in football, the championship, all of a sudden (laughs) (laughs) there's a fumble. Guy runs it back, gets tackled, another fumble. He laterals it behind him. That guy catches it, fumble. Other guy runs it all the way down, fumble. You can't tell me that that's not entertaining. Of course, you're going to be like, this is horrible. These guys are terrible. But you're not looking at it just being like, that was the most wild play I've ever seen in my life. That can't be. That can't be. That can't be fact. Does it look bad? Yes. Was it exciting? 100%. Yeah, everyone that says I have bad internet, is there a way that Silas? Let me, let me. Gosh dang it! Let me, let me send this to you, Silas, real quick. Do you want the upload it's, or the it's download not, speed? It's not your internet; it's packet loss. Uh, do you want the upload or download speed? But why do I have why do I have bad packet loss? Because it's yeah. it's prime time internet. Everybody's on at nine. That's just. I just so, the, so I just live in an area that every like more people are, are in my get it, area get it using like, internet than, get it like than sneaky yeah. than dark horse internet. Yeah. I literally have like 360, 360 up, 360 down. I have I have I have That's a what I'm fiber. Saying. Go I have get fiber. Like a sneaky 360, it's, 360 it's up. It's literally always at like 9 p.m. There's and nothing like, I you, can do. Like if you go look into our our all our lives. It's, it's all at the same time. It'll be at nine o'clock. It'll be, it'll get bad. And then at like nine 30, nine 20, it'll pick but, up and be fine. But like, why doesn't it do that when I stream on whatnot? That's what I'm confused about. When I live stream on whatnot, it never looks bad. Well, are you on your Wi-Fi? Or are you streaming with cellular? No, I'm going through the fiber. I'm going through the internet. I'm using OBS and going through whatnot. It might be like the OBS servers then. That's the only other thing I can think of. Hey, I'm on, I'm on tour life. Oh, it's okay. I was just saying. Do you want to say hi to everyone? It's your birthday. Everyone wish ha- Kelsey happy birthday. Happy birthday. Hey. Everyone wish Kelsey happy birthday. She's hanging to hey, practice. Good, good I love this you. Week. Oh, also Yuli's a dad now. Congrats, Thank you. Thank you. Congratulations. All right. Love you. Have fun. I'll call, uh, call me when you're done. Thank you. All right. Bye, babe. Um, yeah, my internet is fine. Everyone relax. But I did find another comment here. Oh. I, I, had a, I couldn't search top comments because clearly it's not a good comment. Um. <laughs> this, if Kramer is watching right now, Kramer, show yourself in the chat. We're, we're calling people out here. Kramer, show yourself in the chat Hand if you're up. watching. Hand up, Kramer. Kra- Kramer Bookman 512. Hand up, buddy. Show yourself in the chat <laughs> if you're live right now. He said, Tour Life calling FPO not entertaining is h- hilariously ironic. <laughs> That's funny. I like that. Nice. Where's Kramer at though? Hand up, buddy. Well, I'm assuming I'm assuming he's not watching because he doesn't find it entertaining. Yeah. But the thing is, is like if he did put the hand up, that would be awesome. The thing is, is here's the thing. I'm fine with people saying they don't like our show. That is completely fine. We are not everyone's cup of tea. No. Some people like some people like softball questions. Some people like, you know, everyone playing patty cake with one another. Some people like uh, people asking the same question over and over and over and over. If that's what you want, there are plenty of podcasts out there that can go ahead. You can go ahead and watch it. That is completely fine. Yeah. That's just not what we do here. But we do have 775 people watching. So I guess 775 people think it's entertaining. And we appreciate you. Yes. Thank you guys. 
Uh, let's see what else we got. Hey, next week, Silas, oh go get some, go get some mean ones. Yeah, we need to get some good uh, ones. Yeah, we just need people to comment too. If you have, if you have any mean comments, <laughs> yeah. I think we need. Oh, no, whoa, whoa, whoa. we're not inviting it. This is a, <laughs> we're trying. Wait, let me go. You know what we need to do? We need to go off tour life. That's what we need to do. Watch this. This is the trick. Because no one, no one's gonna do it on tour life where I could potentially see it and do exactly what, I'm, what I'm doing I'm right now. We're going to the. I, I'm going the off after. tour life. Yeah. Oh, here we go. Go into the comments. Wait, let's go of, here. Of wait, wait. Just YouTube. What about this one? Uh, oh, here we. Uh, you know what? I think they were in Silas. I think they were in all the videos. Mm, like the I clips? think yes, that's where they were in. They weren't in our. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Yeah. Here. Oh, here we go. <laughs> all right. Let's get into these. Yes. yes sir. Excellent. I found the juicy ones. Bloated stoned Brody. <laughs> uh, all right. <laughs> I will say I am, I am probably 40 pounds overweight right now. So I'm going to be working on that again. Uh, but I've never smoked my life. So I don't know. Is that a compliment though? That looks like I, I would be a stoner. Is that I a know, compliment? I get, I get that too. I get that too all the time. The oh. way they're like, Oh, Paul is absolutely just blazing right now before he gets I don't on, think that's a compliment. on it on everything yeah silas you shut your mouth <laughs> <laughs> i get that a lot well no all the cool all my kids commentary mostly weren't like all the cool kids like then we think in high school all the kid cool kids like were pot smokers or no i don't think so no okay i don't think that was all right definitely not a compliment says definitely barry, cool all, right, guys, barry. So. all right barry all right barry uh Buffalo. space mob we were spectators at Worlds this year, and it was our first major tournament we attended. Me and my brother were both super surprised how fast the rate of play was across the board. Even with hundreds of spectators being herded about fairways. Very impressive. Kind of feel like Brody just tripping. Brother, there's literally screenshots of three hole gaps. Three hole gaps. Just because your one isolated instance, incident was fine doesn't mean it was good across the board brother that's all we're trying to say uh a smith nice says the, this podcast has fallen off i don't know i don't know what that i don't know what we did um let's see here oh i love these takes uh this is from seven two wagon wagon definitely not in the chat Maybe if you were higher on the leaderboard, they would have taken your rant more seriously. <laughs> Do you guys all understand? Let's all take a step. Let's all take a step back real quick. Everyone pause and take a step back. Everyone ready? Everyone ready? With all due respect, 72 wagon wagon. You're an idiot. Okay? <laughs> Because guess who is making all the decisions? The PDGA in the Disc Golf Pro Tour. Do you think the people in the PDGA are good at disc golf? Do you think the people in the Disc Golf Pro Tour are good at disc golf? Those are the people making the decisions. You moron. <laughs> You don't have to be good at disc golf to know what to do. Like, no, there's a backup. Uh, to, to be honest, can we just say this? Most of, the most of the best players in sports are actually idiots when it comes to the sport they play. If you ask them anything about like the outside of actually playing the, and even and even asking them how to play the sport. Have you ever watched like sit down conversations with some of these athletes when they're asked like questions and they'll just be like, Oh, I just, I just go out and I just, I just do it. I just feel it. It's like, what? Like a lot of bet. A lot of the best athletes are terrible coaches. A lot of the best athletes have no idea what they're doing in the business side of the things. That's why they have a publicist. That's why they have a manager. That's why they have an agent. That's why they have a whole team to tell them, Hey, you're wasted. Probably not a good idea to jump in a car and drive. What are we talking about here? What are we talking about here? Jeez. 
I'm actually a phenomenal coach, Connor. Nice try. <laughs> nice try, brother. Um, but yeah, I, I always think that's like such a bad, bad like a uh, thing of like discrediting someone based off their skill level. First off, makes no sense. And then the second thing that doesn't make sense too is people were basically saying like when I first came in, because was I right about everything? No. Was I right about a lot of things? Yes. You want to know one of the things I was right about before anyone else was saying it? We should stop playing in polo jer- uh, polo shirts and we should start playing in jerseys. We're playing in the gosh darn woods. We're getting dirty. We're getting messy. No one casually plays disc golf in polo shirts. No one. So why are we having pros play in polo shirts? You can't sell that. That's not marketable. No one's doing that. And guess what? Guess what everyone has now, Yuli? Everyone has jerseys now. Everyone. Everyone's wearing like jerseys. jerseys. Everyone's wearing jerseys. Guess when I first came in and told people about jerseys? They all thought that was stupid. Okay. We digress. We move forward. We move forward. Um, let's see here. See, now, now we're in it. Yeah, now we're, now, we're, now we're getting fired up. Yeah, fire me up. Give me something. I'm let, me, let me find something for you. Let me find something. Let me get you fired up. Let me get you fired up. Just look for Yuli. They like to, most people like to call me Yuli. Uh, well, I, I got to read this one out by Assassin. It's pretty funny. He says, I agree, but I've never heard vacation and Lynchburg in the same sentence. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh, here we go. Well, I, I don't know if you shout, Yuli, but maybe you can respond to this one. Is this from Kendall James Music? Definitely check out his music, guys. I'm sure it's phenomenal. Uh, maybe people are less receptive to your endless opinions because you abusively shout them in their faces all the time like a know it all blowhard. Do I shout? Well, I think that was directed towards me, Yuli, but you can, you can, on behalf of the podcast, um, respond to that, if you will. Read the last part again. Uh, because you abusively shout them in their faces all the time, like a know-it-all blowhard. It's a podcast. You give your opinion, and you're excited about it. What else are you supposed to Are you supposed to what? whisper? Would this podcast be better if I just talked like this? this yeah, we this should whisper. Hey, Yuli, did you see that uh, Isaac's probably going to go to Dismania? Did you see that? Did you see the backup on hole 13? Is I did see uh, it. How the, do you feel about that? I saw the backup, and to be quite honest, I don't really care. I think the PDGA and the Disc Golf Pro Tour are doing a phenomenal whoa, job. Whoa, 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 whoa. Quit yelling at me. They're doing... Quit sorry, yelling at sorry, me. sorry. They're doing a phenomenal job. Um... I have nothing bad to say about them. Two great organizations, and they're awesome. Yeah, like hey, that, the- pod, that podcast is boring as heck. <laughs> no one's watching that. No, no, no one is watching that. And then, go and then, oh, and go somewhere this. else. What do you What do you want from us? You want us to not believe what we're saying? I, I have you ever all? Have no. you ever seen me get fired up about something that I didn't care about? Yeah, or that you what? That, what? That you were comp- that you didn't believe you were right. Yeah, what, what are we talking all. about here? I hate. I I don't like when people say that you're a know it all. I feel like I know what I'm talking about. That's why I'm talking about it. I agree. Yeah, I agree. Come on. I, I, I mean, I can. Here's the thing. If you want to sit here and we can talk about the Serengeti. And we can talk about the animals on the Serengeti. We can talk about the vegetation on the Serengeti. We can talk about the climate on the Serengeti. Guess what I'm never going to do? I'm never going to raise my voice. I'm not going to inflect my, my words. I'm not going to do anything. Why? Because it's boring. I don't unless care. You I'm, feel, I'm, I'm li- unless you say something crazy, like, yeah. unless I hear it's, you say something crazy, then I might go off. Does it snow over there? <laughs> no, it definitely doesn't snow. But also, I don't care. I don't care about the climate and the Serengeti. What if I was like, yeah, it's always snowing over there. I'd say, cool, Yuli. Great. Because I don't care. <laughs> I don't care. Haley King posted an apology today. Well, she probably has to post like 10 more. This is why people have PR. This is why people have PR. Because spoiler alert, when you post something on social media that's crazy, guess what happens? Not good things happen. 
That's why people hire PR people to be like, hey, you probably shouldn't say that.